All right, let's bring in Jay Glazer, Fox Sports NFL insider, owner of Unbreakable Performance Center, which is a beautiful gym that I could Thank not you. keep up in. <laughs> <laughs> and the founder of MVP Merging Vets and Players. Hi, Jay. It's good to see you. Um, you very too. excited to talk about your book. So you Thank have a new you. book out, Unbreakable. And uh, you've said you've dealt with depression and anxiety all your life. So what made you decide to write your book? You, just being that, like, look, I wake up every single day in the gray. and um, You've known me for a while. We used to call me crazy, right? And now there's a now we talk about mental health. You know, crazy is pretty good. It's a badge of honor in sports and, and football and fighting. But what you probably didn't know is how much pain I was in all these years. And what I realized is the more I could, like we talk about mental health, but who gives it words? Who describes it? So I want to be able to describe it for people out there, whether you have my level, which is clinical depression, anxiety from the various early age um, that I could possibly remember from a little kid on, or you're going through because of the pandemic. Or, I mean, it's just, or you just, you know, think your life sucks because you compare yourself to everybody else's filtered fraction of a second on Instagram. It's just a different world these days. I wanted to give words to it for other people to have the conversations. The more teammates we can get, the more I could talk about, it, the more I've opened up to my friends about it, really the last two years, actually the closer it's gotten us together. Yeah, I think it's important that you, that you mentioned that because a lot of times it feels, it can feel weak to say that you're struggling mm -hmm. or that you need help or that you're not in a good space because you're always supposed to be perfect and social media makes mm -hmm. it seem like everything's always supposed to be aligned and you're grinding and blessings and, yeah. you know, so it feels very vulnerable and, and probably, I mean, for women, you know, we, we cry to each other every five minutes. I cry mm -hmm. over commercials. So it's, it can sometimes be easier for us to say that we're, you right. know, in a more difficult place, but you know, for men, being able to talk about that and being open about it and, like you said, have teammates is, is really important. Yeah. yeah, look, and, like, the book is a prescriptive book. It's, you know, how I got to where I am. Look, I got I – don't, I don't know if you know this, but the first 11 years of my career, I was making 9700 bucks a year. So I know what it's like on both. It was I know what it's like to be broke, and I know what it's like to be unbreakable where none of that stuff broke me. Um, but, yeah, for, for dudes, like, for me, no one's questioning my mind. Manhood. You know, I got involved in mixed martial arts early on, so I could cry on the drop of a dime. I got no problem with that. But, you know, I, I like to, to brag about my physical scars from fighting, but I want us to start bragging about our mental scars a lot more. Can you Especially ex dudes. Can you explain what it means to be in the gray? Yeah, so gray for me is depression and anxiety, and I wake up with it every single morning of my life, and it sucks like i wake up every morning feeling like the sky is falling and the universe is against me when, when it's not and and i know people out there look and go how could this guy feel this way his life is great and i get it my life is great on the outside it's fantastic and i work my butt off to get here but between my ears it just sucks and it's a daily battle for me and it's something i can't give up on and i know the more i could be of service to people that helps me through the gray, the more I can get teammates. And I wrote the book so I can kind of create a huge team so we could all walk this walk together. And I did it for everybody else to be a service. But at the same time, I also did it for myself. I, I need it. Like I have, man, I, I, don't, I never know who I'm waking up with every day. And it's, it's a battle. His new book, Unbreakable, Jay Glazer. Well, I appreciate you writing about this, Jay. I have issues with anxiety and first started having suicidal thoughts at the age of 14. So I can definitely relate to everything wow. that you're talking about. And, you know, now with the pandemic, mental health has become an even bigger conversation, one that we've been trying to have in sports for a long time. So make sure you check out Jay Glazer's new book, Unbreakable. Yeah. So also Fox. And, 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 and the, the, su the suicidal thoughts you're talking about also, I, I tackle a lot of that in the book because we've had really great success, if you will, in our charity, MVP, Merging Vets and Players. And I really get into that like how we've been able to turn a lot of our, our members from suicidal to not thinking about it. But in today's day and age, man, it's, you know, it's like the power of suggestion. Suicide is an epidemic. We just saw Miss USA, yeah, right, take her own life. And you could be that beautiful, as beautiful as you are, beautiful as she is, and still feel this loneliness. So I'm trying to, man, I've never known what it's like. I would feel this loneliness in the inside behind my rib cage. And it's motivated me to go do all these great things to try and get love from the outside in because I don't know how to do it from the inside out. So I'm hoping that 
maybe at one point they can meet in the middle and I could try to learn how to love myself from the inside out. But that's what we all do. we got to do together. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes being a blessing to other people is healing to mm-hmm. yourself. And you do a great job with MVP, merging vets and players. I come from a military family, so I appreciate Thank all you. the work that you do with the veterans. So awkward transition to <laughs> football news. Uh, the Probably the biggest watch that will be on for the quarterback position, because Russell's Russell Wilson rumors, and we know that Jimmy G is going to get traded. But Aaron Rodgers and what he's going to do is is kind of the first domino that has to fall before all of these moves are made, because does he go to Denver and then that takes away a trade partner in Denver for Jimmy G? Does he go to the Steelers? So what do you think Aaron Rodgers ends up doing, Jay? You're, you're asking me to predict Aaron Rodgers? What's going on between his <laughs> years? No shot. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. No. So, uh, man, if you'd asked me two weeks ago, I would have said, yeah, he's. I could see him. I think he's gone no matter what. And then like a week ago, somebody inside the Packers – was doing a pretty good job of convincing me that no, the, the the fences are being mended here, and I could see him coming back. And then somebody else said, "No, he really wants to go down to you know this place." So I, look, um, you know me, I like to deal in facts. So with him, I know I can never, I, I can never figure out what what, go, what goes on between his ears. Yeah, I, I I think he ends up leaving, but that's just because the only thing, uh, well, one of the things so I do to is him being petty because I'm a petty person, so I I, I feel like I could kind <laughs> well, of well, so did I do. until last week, and then somebody in there like, man, my guy, one of my guys in Green Bay is really convincing me. No, I'm telling you, my, it's it's gotten better. Like he's really gotten better, but that's also before half his coaching staff left. Exactly. So let's talk about the Super Bowl. Obviously, is next week, and we're kind of all saving our predictions for next week when. The Rams, and, well, I want to say the Rams host the Cincinnati Bengals, but they're actually really not. But they are. It's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> it's the other way around. But they are <laughs> going to be at their home stadium in SoFi, and everyone in L.A. is looking forward to it. I had a lot of questions about Matthew Stafford throughout the season. I wanted to see what he was going to do in the postseason, having never won a playoff game in his career. And he's done an amazing job. He had some turnover issues towards the end of the season, and now here they are in the Super Bowl in his first year with the Rams. It, you know, look, it was funny because I was there on the trip with, so here's the backstory. Last year, about this time, last year, I break up with my girlfriend at the time, Rosie Tennyson, still one of my closest friends, and uh, I bring her up because she deserves a Super Bowl ring here. So Andrew Whitworth calls me and says, "Hey man, I know you're you know you're you know attack a little bit. I'm down in Cabo with McVeigh. Why don't you come down here? We got a room." And I said, "Nah, I'm just gonna hang out here, man. It's cool." He's like, "Why would you not? Like, just come down here." And I'm like, ah, "Why would I not?" So I decide the next day, okay, you sure? He goes, yes, we got your room. Come on down. So McVeigh says, all right, if Glazer's coming, I'm going to stay. He was going to leave. And actually, we had a huge talk that night about mental health, which is in the book, a huge thing trying to get McVeigh to understand, like, what people me and Andrew Whitworth go through. So the next day, Stafford happens to check in to our hotel. It really was coincidental. People don't believe it. It was a total coincidence. And Man, Whitworth hosted dinner in his room later that night. Those two guys fell in love. They figured out how to get him to the Rams. Two days later, you know, McVeigh's over there getting this deal done. And, man, during a dinner over there. So I basically told these guys, you know what? Um, you know, my ex-girlfriend deserves a Super Bowl ring because we didn't break up. I want to come down. And then McVeigh would have you know, left. And you two would have fallen in love with each other. So, yeah, it always goes back to my exes. Uh, doesn't it always I want to be in the room where it happens Joe Burrow also wildly impressive uh, stint so far with the Bengals I think he's really changed the narrative for two things in the NFL one the idea that you can't change turn around an organization that is a traditionally losing organization you can't overcome a big injury you can't overcome a bad offensive line you can't overcome a young uh, unproven coach he's done all of that and two I think he has turned the clock up a little bit on all of these other young players about how fast their success needs to happen but he is so fun to me he's one of my pl- favorite players in the league how impressed are you with what he's done well when he was coming out what Joel Klatt told me and then what everybody else said after that is he's a culture changer. The dude's a culture changer. So, you know, right away, remember there's a lot of, a lot of talk about uh, he, maybe he won't go to Cincinnati and, you know, all these things. Man, he was always on board, him and Zach Taylor like this. And Zach Taylor said, no way we will trade this pick because the guy's a culture changer. So I heard it first from Joel Klatt, and that's what everybody said. And obviously 
That's exactly what he's done. He's changed the whole culture over there in Cincinnati. This guy's special. I love him. I agree. I, I told Alex earlier, I told the Dolphins to try, give them five first-round picks and rename Ocean Drive after him if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't listen, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but it's apparent the Bengals weren't going to listen to that offer anyway. Jay, it's great to no. catch up with you. Great to see you. I'm glad you're doing well. Make sure you check out his new book, Unbreakable. He is the owner of, of Unbreakable Performance Center and the founder of MVP, Merging Vets and Players. Make sure you check that out as well. They do amazing work. There is his new book, Unbreakable, how I turned my depression and anxiety into motivation, and you can too. Great to talk to you, Jay. Thanks for coming on. You too. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. That's Jay Glazer, Fox Sports NFL Insider. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.